Welcome to the best things in life podcast with Kevin Hamoki. And uh, welcome back to another episode of the Best Things in Life podcast uh, with me, Kevin Amoki. Um, if this is your first time checking out the pod, thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if this is your first time, the way this podcast works is I pretty much determine what the best is in any given subject. Today, I'm going to be talking about the best Cuban cigar, uh, but tomorrow I could be talking about uh, the best type of um, antiseptic wipe when you cut yourself uh, shaving, you know? Oh, aftershave. No, is that what they call it? The best aftershave. Yeah, see, I can, right there, man. I can make that shit up out of my ass, you know? So, yeah, that, that's pretty much how it works. Um, and if you're watching this, uh, the way I do my podcast is I record them from my car. Uh, so anything can happen. Anything can happen. I don't drive when I'm podcasting. Never drive in pod. But uh, other than that, um, yeah, thanks for uh, stopping by, checking out the channel. Um, the way I'm going to be going about it, uh, the cigars today is I'm going to be basically giving you about 10 of them. Uh, and then I'm going to determine what the best is uh, using very degrees of deduction, science, uh, human testing, and just overall bullshit. I'm going to listen. If you If you've come to this pod for for straight up facts, um, you might get some, you might get some, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a natural, I'm a natural bullshitter troll. Uh, I don't like to use the word liar, but, uh, maybe, maybe might, might drop a white lie from time to time. Um, other than that, I, uh, I hope you guys are doing well in these, uh, trying times I wanted to do, uh, so, uh, the reason why I wanted to do the subject of, uh, the best Cuban cigar is, uh, currently it's, uh, 2021, uh, I think it's May, May, something mid May. And I'm, I'm, I'm in Ontario, Canada, Canada, Ontario. And, uh, you know, we, we pretty much got our, our summer canceled, so we can't be doing anything. Can't be going anywhere. And it got me uh, thinking about the last time I actually was on vacation. And the last time I was on vacation was back in 2016 when I went to Cuba. I did a solo trip down there to Cuba. And I smoked a shitload of cigars. I told the story of this on, on another pod, but I basically went down there. Uh, you know, in you know, I, when I travel, I travel in a different style. I, I I don't like, I don't need the first five star. I go to like you know grimy spots. I try to get you know the feel of the city. I you know I make my way around on my own. Anyways, long story short is I uh, I spent most of my money on cigars. A little bit on rum, but it's most of my money on cigars and uh, ended up uh, having no money for the last three days of my trip there and um, ran, basically lived off breakfast buffets, rum and crackers in the evening and my cigars, you know, so uh, I know I know I know quite a bit of things when it comes to the Cubans. Uh, fuck. Uh, yeah. That's another thing, too. When I do these podcasts, uh, random people could stop by. I'm currently in the parking lot of a Good Life Fitness. So I would assume because gyms are all closed, it's empty. But sometimes, I like this particular location, cops like to come by and just park and eat their coffee and donuts. So they're, they're now at the opposite end of the park. But uh, if they drop by and think I'm doing something suspicious, uh, we'll see how it goes. Remember, guys, I'm... I'm I'm just I'm, I'm not doing anything illegal yet. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to do the 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 pod on 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 cigars and smoking, um, especially now in the summertime. There's not much to do, and I don't know. One of my favorite activities, not even an activity, but my my favorite thing is uh, just going out on a nice summer day, maybe at the end of the day. You know, 
having good food, doing something fun, and you just want to unwind and relax. Obviously, you know, you could do stuff inside, but if you still want to stay outside and just, you know, take out, go out on your porch, go out to an empty park bench or your car or whatever, and just fucking break out a fucking stogie, you know, a nice, a nice Cuban cigar, you know, that, you know, that, 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 that's one way to kill about an hour. See the sunset come down while you're, while you're sucking in that tobacco. That natural tobacco. Uh, that's the thing. I'm not really a... So, I guess from... Fuck. Because this is YouTube and Spotify and all that shit. Off the top, uh, disclaimer. If you're not of legal age to smoke, don't do not do it. Don't get into it. Don't 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 smoke. In gen- don't vape. I know that's what the kids are doing now. Don't vape. Here's the thing, man. Especially when you're young. Especially if you're under 18. Don't get into shit that... That will eventually become an addiction, you know, whether it be booze, whether it be porn, because that shit's going to that's just going to stick with you and it could deter you. I mean, I know people that that, that smoke, but that's the thing. I know people that like, listen, I, I, I've picked up a cigarette from here from time to time. I luckily, knock on wood, never got addicted to it. I've picked up booze. Well, I, I used to drink quite a bit back in. Anyways, like you go through periods or whatever, right? But I think everything in moderation, says the fat guy in in his car. But yeah, everything in moderation. Uh, and just like cigars, you know, you, I, I don't believe you should be smoking one every... Some guys do. They smoke one every day. I, I like to think of a cigar as kind of like a fine wine. I, pu- I put it on the same echelon as a fine wine. You know, you break it out at the end of a day, end of a week or a hard week or whatever. You just fucking enjoy it. You know, and they they do cost quite a bit. Like, I mean, you can get, I mean, that's the thing. You can get cheap, like, not cheap, but you can make, get, I, I got one from like a, a place I like to go called, and I should maybe get a plug. Uh, it's from Cigar Bodega up in, uh, up in Unionville. And, uh, they, they do, they, they have their own house brands. Uh, this one I believe is from Nicaragua. I got one from Nicaragua. And, uh, yeah, I've smoked. Uh, I mean, I, I prefer. Like, here's the thing, man. There, there's an echelon of of, of Nicar. Cuban cigars are the OGs on the block. They're the top tier. But other countries do do them as well. Some people say they're better. Some people, whatever. Obviously, there's a premium price when you go with the Cubans or whatever. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, like all habits, uh, moderation. Don't let it fucking take over your life and uh, live your best life. That that that's a whole that's a whole thing about this pod. That, and the reason why I do it is because I'm personally trying to live my listen. I'm 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 30, 32, 30, I'm 32, right? And statistically speaking, statistically, see, I can't even speak. But I'm 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 not maybe not halfway. I'm. I'm two thirds, no one third. I'm one third. I'm probably one third to the end of my life. If you think about it, like I know it's going to sound freaky to to, to other thirty year old, but think about it. Here, here's the thing. Let's just say on on the high end, grand scheme with modern technology, I make it to. That's the thing is I got I got grandparents that have made it into their. One was ninety nine. One was ninety. Thing. My dad's in the seventies. Mom's in the sixties. So I want to say I'll. I'll if, if if I'm lucky, I should be at least the 60s. But if, if if I'm like, you know, let's let's see where technology goes. And I'm doing all the drugs, man. Like, dude, the, the moment I, I can do like human growth hormones, the moment I could do steroids or the moment I could the moment they invent some type of like whatever Joe Rogan's on, whatever cocktail he's on. I'll take some of that shit. You know, I'll, I'll get plastic abs, fucking dick enlargement. I don't give a fuck. Like I'm. I'm gonna modify this body, dude. The moment, the moment they start, uh, the moment they start, um, uh, you know, introducing bionics, you know, like, 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 you know, you know, fucking, uh, you know, metal arms and Winter Soldier arms and shit like that. I'm fucking getting it. I'm, I'm replacing whatever breaks. You know, fuck. I'd my knees are rough. I used to, I, I used to do fucking parkour. I used to do fucking parkour at a very crazy weight when parkour should not be attempted and my knees are fucking fucked you know and and my back is fine i mean the see thing is I, I, i'm a driver i drive a lot 
whether it be on motorcycles or cars or whatever. And that's sitting motion and bouncing, whatever. I got a fat fucking, I got a fucked up back, you know? So the moment I can replace a back, dude, I'm going for full cybernetic, man. I don't give a fuck. But yeah, what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, I got, I got maybe some 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Let's say, say 70. I got 40 more good years if, if if shit doesn't hit the fan, right? After Listen, after 70, I can't. That's the thing. I can't. Here's the thing. As you get here's a very weird thing that I've noticed. As you get older, you start being not being able to do shit. But also at the same time, this is to the young kids out there. When you're like, you know, before you're, I want to say maybe 18, before you're 18, you're not allowed to do a lot of things. But then there's that sweet spot from 19 or depending on whatever country you start drinking. Let's just say from 19 to about 35. Because then once you got kids, that's where, where shit also hits the fan. But let's say from 19 to 35, you're in a sweet spot to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. And then the moment, you know, wife, kids, mortgage, life, back pain, all that shit comes in. You're kind of fucked. Well, doors close. What I'm was what I'm saying. Like, see, right now, I'm 32, gonna be fucking 33, and I could do whatever the fuck I want. I could quit my job. I could move down to Mexico, marry a marry a nice Mexican lady, and you, you know have a pop a couple couple of kids, or I could just fuck off and uh you know travel the Far East, you know, may, maybe find like a gang, a League of Shadows, train for maybe like four or five years. And then become fucking Batman and come back to Toronto. And I mean, crime's not as bad, but I don't know. Maybe I could do shit like that. It's all fucking open, man. It's all open. So, yeah, man, that's uh, that's pretty much uh, that's that's pretty much the state of my mental health right now. You know, <laughs> I'm losing my mind in the pandemic. Uh, but yeah, other than that, um, I want to talk about cigars. Because they, they, they are a quintessential part of just enjoying life and living the best best you can, no matter when you can. So uh, before I do, before I do talk about cigars, I want to I want to I want to actually get into one. So I'm going to show you. So this is how. So this is for first time beginners or maybe 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 you are a smoker and you've been doing it wrong. But this is the best way to smoke and enjoy. A cigar. So what you're going to do first is you're going to grab your cigarro, as uh, as the Cubans like to say. And uh, what you're going to do is you you know you you're going to hold it. You're going to you're going to smell it. Get get a bit of that aromatic. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get uh, what you call is a cutter. So let me just get my cutter. You're going to get yourself a cutter, which is one of these things right here. Uh, and uh, there's two types of there's like the flat cut. There's the V cut that usually cuts like a V into the shape. I, I don't know. I've been told the V cut maybe is a bit better because it uh, digs deeper into the the grain or whatever. I personally like the flat. It's quick and easy. So what you get is when, once you get your flat, uh, once you get your flat cutter, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the tip. You're gonna cut the tip. Not you. You can't take too much off. You just wanna. You just want to braise over the tip of the cigar. You don't want to take a big chunk because if you take a big chunk, you're going to create a lot of uh, debris and all that shit. And that shit's going to get in your mouth and you, you're you going to be fucking licking your dick like a, or your mouth like you're about to eat a dick. Right. You, you're going to be doing that shit. So what you're going to want to do is just slightly. Let me just see if I can. Just 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 the fucking tip. OK. And as my mushroom headed friends know, the tip is all you need. There we go. So cut the tip nice and clean. Let me see if I can show that to you. How does that look? See, just the tip. Just the tip, boys. You know, just the tip. So once you got the tip cut off, actually, you know what? I'm Okay, so here's the thing. Normally, I would say you don't want to remove the... Uh, yeah, you don't want to remove the, uh, the fucking wrapper or the uh, stamp or whatever. 
and all that shit, right? But because this one has a really fucking large one, because it's a house blend or whatever, I'm going to take it off. Normally on like those high-end Cubans, you, you, they're usually high up and you don't really want to smoke past it. The, the, the flavor is going to be before the, the thing, right? Some people fucking go crazy, go all the way down till they fucking eat the fucking cigar. To each their own. I'm just saying don't, don't go past the fucking thing. I'm going to remove it on this one because it's fucking long or whatever. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. So this one, uh, so the cigar, I'm, you know, a little fucking plug. The cigar I'm smoking today is uh, the Cast Collection, second edition from Cigar Bodega out here in uh, it's a Nicaraguan, medium strength. That's another thing. We'll talk about strengths as well. So I'm just going to take my wrapper, wrapper off. And then what you're going to do is... Uh, once once you get once you get the cigar all ready and prepped, you're gonna grab your lighter. I prefer a torch. I have a colibri uh, torch. And what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to you're gonna want to burn the edges of the uh, of the cigar. You don't want to just do a complete uh, burn right into the center because you're gonna you're gonna really burn it and fucking ash it up really early on. It, it could distort the taste. So what you're gonna want to do is just Around the edges. Listen, man, guys, this is this is basically like a good fucking blowjob. Just a tip and around the edges, okay? So just around the I burnt my finger just a little bit. And then hold on. Alright, this is pretty hard with a mic. Oh, I burnt my fucking beard. Oh, fuck. I, I actually burnt my beard. I don't know. Doing it with a mic was not a smart move. But, okay. I got it lit. Oh. And then and now the smoke's coming out. You gotta suck the smoke out, get a little bit in, and that's pretty much how you light a cigar. Try not to burn your fucking self. Uh, doing it with a mic is not suggested move, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how you light a cigar. And what you're gonna do is, if it goes out, light it up just the same way, but just just fucking keep on top of it, boys. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty much how we're gonna be doing. Uh, Ooh, I actually burnt myself. Anyways, so uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, cigars and why they're. So here's the thing: Cuban cigars, in particularly, they got a history with 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 Cuba. They 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 you know the good cigar companies are you know ones that are handmade by by people that have been doing it for 40, 50 years professionals or whatever and the thing is when it comes to a cigar uh when it comes to a cigar uh there's a couple of features a couple of things you want to you want to have in a cigar so let's get down to what makes the best cigar right um particularly a cuban so uh first it's going to be obviously uh, I mean, brand brand is a factor, right? Because the higher the quality, the longer history of the brand, the 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 more prestigious a brand is, the more likely the uh, the more likely the um, the quality of the of the cigar is going to be up there, right? So the brand is going to be a factor when it comes to to them. The the ones that I have on the list today are all top tier brands. They're the top brands out of Cuba, uh, you know, rated highly. Uh, the next the next other feature is obviously going to be a cost. Like at the end of the day, cigars are going to cost more than your average cigarette or the pack of whatever, more than a fucking, uh, more than a fucking, um, what's that shit called? Uh, more than weed, more than whatever, you know? So actually, hold on. I got to actually fucking, I, I rushed, I rushed the lighting. I don't want to rush the lighting. So let me, let me reheat that shit. You know, 
not burning, not burning myself. Oh, God, God damn it. God damn it. That's some good shit. But anyways. Yeah, another factor is that they are expensive. I mean, I mean, I want to say low range of a good quality, uh, a good quality um, a Cuban cigar in Canada. Because here's another thing, too, because because Cuba is an island. And because because it, it has a lot of restriction, because it's history of being a uh, possibly communist country back in the day. And, you know, the embargoes it had with U.S. and all that stuff. Especially if you're American, it's hard to get cigars. Recently, uh, because of Obama, uh, they were able to open up, I think, cigars to, to, to America. So hopefully things are thing. But generally, just the export cost of getting it from Cuba to your mouth is going to cost you quite a bit, right? So standardly speaking, I would say on the low end range of a decent cigar, and you could get like, you know, lower brands or whatever, but a decent cigar is going to cost you anywhere from, I want to say, 15 to 25 that's that's your that's your that's your uh that's your standard um uh that's your standard cost when it comes to uh to a, a decent a decent uh cuban brand and here's another another factor to consider because of the the rarity of these products because of the 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 hype around cuban cigars the the problem is you're going to run into a possibility of getting fakes you know, you know, knockoffs because, dude, you know, easily you could get one that's made in Nicaragua. Here's the thing. You can get one that's made in Nicaragua. That's still a good taste in cigar. But the guy fucking changes the wrapper, puts on a fucking uh, Cohiba wrapper on it or whatever. You know, and if you're not if you're not if you don't if you haven't smoked a real one and you go smoke these ones, you'll be like, oh, hey, they're not bad. They're not bad. So it's very tricky. That's why I always would say. If you're going to try out your first cigar, either go to Cuba and get it from a fucking Cuba, like not a guy off the street like I did. I did that once and I tasted the difference because I had long story short, I got I got uh, I got uh, taken for 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 like a box of Cohibas, 10 Robustos, because uh, they told me they were they were, they fell off a truck. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I'll, tr- I'll try those. And uh, they were still good. They were still good. They were probably like the defects from the factory or whatever. But when I tasted that versus what I what I tasted of a real Cohiba, I was like, ah, yeah, the ones off the truck are a little bit more dry or and stale or whatever. You know, that's another thing, too. Cigars like wine do age. So you're going to want to get ones uh, and then maybe keep them in your uh, your uh, your humidor. That's another thing. And that's another podcast, maybe or whatever. But the when you get a cigar, uh, you know, you get them from humidors at the store. Then you bring it to your own and then you can age them yourself. They do get better with age. I personally, you know, keep them in for about a week or a month before I start smoking them. Whatever. It's my own whatever. But that's another thing, too. It's a it's it's a it's it's not it's not just a simple smoke and go like your cigarettes and all that shit. Right. Well. Oh, we get into the good flavor now. So, yeah, that's another factor is uh your, your cost. Right. Now, obviously, the higher, more fancier brands, the more the more esteemed ones are going to climb higher, man. I mean, it's not like here's the thing. They a lot of these big companies do like limited releases. They do special uh, they do special um, uh, releases or they, they have like just like wine. They might have one that's like a 12 year old aged or whatever, and they can get ridiculous price. Like I saw one. I think it was a Cohiba or it might have been a Trinidad. I forget what it was, but it was a Cohiba and like a box was like five grand. And there's some that could even go higher. Like, I think there's, yeah, there's certain ones I could just like, we're talking, I think Davidoff's are like a couple grand. So for a box. So yeah, it can, it can get really ridiculous. Uh, not ridiculous. It can get fucking really pretentious. I don't know what to say, but you can get pretty fucking up there, right? So cost factor is another one. So that's why I picked ones that are generally, I believe, are the are in 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 the realm of possibilities of getting a cigar. As these these are cigars that okay are not like 
these aren't like the fucking uh uh the rare gemstone cigars these are ones that are the best cigars that you can smoke on a regular basis from time to time so if you if you know if, if you google the best fucking cigar rarest whatever you're going to get a whole completely different one than the ones i have right i'm talking about the the best cigar you can smoke uh today you know or whenever whenever you decide to get into it right the next next factor is obviously going to be uh taste and particularly strength of the smoke strength here's the thing at the end of the day look look if if, if you tell a non-smoker this they'll be like the smoke tastes disgusting it's yucky yucky it's like well listen i mean we smoke our meat we smoke you know c- cigars there is a taste to the smoke you know depending on how it's prepped right you know what like smoked meat right you know you got these uh ashy flavors you know depending on the type of wood that they use you know and all that shit right and just like cigars it's the type of leaves you know how much they're aged the way they're prepped the way they're stacked or whatever can determine the taste of them right and it could also determine the strength now when when they mean strength they can they, they can mean like you know you can have a cigar like this one let me just Yeah, that's a medium because it doesn't. It's not as harsh as a as a as a, as, a, as a strong, bold, ashy cigar, right? So, strength is a you know. F- and now, when it comes to strength, again, it, that's where it comes down to personal, personal preference. You got to smoke it, and if you're like, "Ooh, this one's really ooh," then go go try a, a little bit lighter, right? And there's different degrees or whatever, right? And size, and and that's another thing. The, the 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 ones that I'm going to be given, they vary from sizes. You're going to want to find one that's perfect to your size. I'm per, I'm personally I'm uh I like I like a 30 minute smoke. I like about a Churchill gauge. So that's another thing. There's gauges of how big the cigars get. Some can be like small and and thin, like a well, I mean Captain Black, I guess you consider as a cigar, right? But you can get small little cigarettos. Those little ones, or you could get like the big robusto double coronas, like they're big, like it's it's like like it's like sucking on a fucking yeah, you know, like they're they're big, right? So that's another factor to consider, right? The strength and all this, and then lastly, we're gonna be going, we're gonna be using actual professional scores because I'm not a fucking professional. So uh, in terms of cigars, when it comes to the cigar world, if you want anything or know anything about cigars. You're going to want to go to a site called CigarAficionado.com. They have everything you need to know about cigar culture, about the quality of cigars, how to smoke cigars, people that smoke cigars. I mean, celebs like Michael Jordan, Stallone, Arnold, you know, even Joe Rogan. He smokes cigars on his pod, you know. Even I do. You know, good company, good company. Michael Jordan, Joe Rogan and me, man. I can't afford the cigars they smoke. But anyways, cigar aficionado scores are something to consider. So with that being said, let's get into the fucking top 10 uh, cigars, Cuban cigars. And uh, that's another thing, too. You're going to want to you're going to want to take your time. I'm smoking this one a little bit fast. It's also really hard to do. I did not think this through of smoking a cigar uh, while doing a podcast. Uh, but let's fucking do it. So let me let me let me get the fucking list. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Got some ash on my mic. Got some ash on my mic. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So. Okay. So I'm going to be basically going in order of alphabetic alphabetic order. These are the top. I, I, I tried to pick the top cigar from each of the top brands and we're going to do this elimination style right we'll read the you know well, i'll tell you about the cost the strength the, the cigar aficionado score 
I'll let you know a little bit about the company, a little bit about that particular cigar, and then we'll fucking figure it out, boys and girls. You know, so the first one I want to start off is the Bolifa, and I've smoked most of these. I'll let you know if I haven't. The first one I want to talk about is the Bolivar Belicicoso Fino. I've also been taking Spanish lessons, so uh, uh, yo, yo, yo hablo español. Uh, mi amor, if you know what that means, mi, mi amigos, mi amigos, okay, oh Jesus, fucking, uh, uh, okay, so, the Bolivar Bol- Belize Cofinos, uh, basically just, I mean, the, the company, Simon Bolivar was a powerful general of the 19th century who freed much of South America from Spanish rule. In 1901, uh, 71 years after his death, the Roja Company uh, in Havana began producing this brand. The brand, like the figure himself, is blended to be strong and robust. Uh, it's not really recommended for, for new cigar smokers. Uh, it, is, it, is strength, it is a really strong cigar. It's very earthy. Uh, this one has cocoa and coffee bean that supports the notes of... Uh, Red pepper and leather. So th- those are those are kind of the the taste you're gonna kind of have when you smoke one of these bolivars. You know, uh, the cost of a bolivar Belisico fino. Uh, now here's the thing: the price that I got were from a site called Cigars Finest. Obviously, if you're in your country or or, or you know taxes are involved, I didn't involve taxes, so these numbers could go up. Most likely, I'll be honest to you, they'll probably go up. An extra five or six dollars, depending on where you're from. So the cost of these ones, though, you're looking at about seventeen dollars U.S. Uh, for one of these cigars. Strength, it's a full strength cigar, really good. And cigar uh, aficionado gave this one uh, a ninety-five out of a hundred. You know, so it's definitely uh, a uh, a popular a popular uh, cigar. Um, yeah, I mean the Bolivars, I've had them. They are a very strong cigar. So if you're if you're new to smoking, it might throw you off a bit. But I mean they're decently priced. And um yeah, for what you're getting, they're 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 an old company too, tried and tested. Um but yeah, the Bolivars, uh, they're a great brand, but again, they're on the strong side. So if you're new to it, easy to but if you're a regular smoker and you haven't had a Bolivar, try them because i would say they're they're in that same range of like a high-end cohiba or uh, a hoyo uh you know they're they're or not a hoyo but yeah but, but, but they're they're definitely on the stronger side of of the cigars okay uh the next one is this this is basically this is the the, the flagship of the Cuban cigar. If you've never smoked before and you're just a casual thing, you're going to, you've heard this name before. It's, it's, it's the most popularized smoke they have. Uh, I'm talking about the Cohiba, and this particular one is their top tier. I'm talking about the Cohiba Bejeque. Fuck. I, I just, I just learned how to say this. The Cohiba Bejeque, uh, Bejeque, Bejeque, B E H I K E. Fuck, I should have learned how to say that. The Cohiba Bahaiki B H K 52. Okay. So the Cohibas, if you don't know, they're the fucking staple. It's, uh, the Cohiba was Fidel Castro's preferred brand, was created in 1966 as Havana's premier brand for diplomatic sur- uh, purposes. So whenever the Cubans went out to these world leaders or they invited the world leaders, they'd bring a couple of Cohibas and be like, listen, let's, let's have a cigar. Uh, JFK, bring in some of your ladies. Let's have a good time. Let's fuck. Right? That's what these cigars were created. And then in uh, since 1982, it was offered to the public in three sizes. The Lanceros, the Coronas Especials, and uh, the Patelas. Pantel- Pantelas. In 1989, three more sizes were added to complete the classic line, namely the Esplendidos, the Robustos, and the Exquisitos. In 1992, the following five sizes were further made in order to commemorate the 500th anniversary of the discovery of Cuba in 1492. Uh, the Segolo, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Uh, the initial flavors. So the initial flavors are really uh, they're they're woodsy, very earthy tones. Uh, some some pleasant earths and and a little bit of a coffee, a little bit of a coffee taste. Most of the good ones tend to have a bit of a coffee taste because people are, are familiar with the coffee, right? So, um, this one's not really coffee. It's also burnt out, and I'm actually going to take a break on this one. I'm lucky enough that this one actually burnt out. But I'll have one later. And don't burn my car. Don't burn my car. If I, if I catch on fire, guys, just know that I did this out of love for you guys. If I die in a fiery accident, it's because for you. Anyways, uh, yeah, man, the Cohiba Beheki is... Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, the Cohiba, because it's a premium brand, a single cigar of the uh, Cohiba, especially this this line... You're looking at about $120 US for a single, right? Now, this is, this is going to be one of the most expensive ones that I have on the list today. But it's just like buying Jordans. It's like buying a Mustang. It's like buying top tier shit. You're going to pay part and part is because you know the quality is there. But part and part is because of the name, right? The prestige of smoking a, uh, a, a Cohiba, right? So, again, the... the you know, depending on, on where you are and, and, and your price point, this might be a little bit over, a little bit high, but you're gonna, you're you're definitely gonna get top tier smoke, one of the best, might even be the best. Uh, strength, like I said, it's a full smoke cigar, so you're gonna get those really rich tones. Uh, uh, cigar aficionado scored this one a 97, one of the highest. Like I don't know if anyone's reached a hundred. I believe that this one actually might be the highest ever scored. There might be another one. I'm just drawing a blank right now. But yeah, this might be the highest one scored. I think this is also the highest scored I have on the list today. So yeah, man, the Cohiba. If you want top tier prestige, this is the cigar you're going to want to get. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. Let's see. Um, there's a fucking random guy. Just working on his car right now. Anyways, uh, the next one that I want to talk about is uh, H. Upman Magnum 50s. I smoked these ones. These were these were a good one too. I uh, I forget which president it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a one. I, f- I forget there was a president that these were his favorites. But the H. Upman Magnum 50s. H. Up- so Herman Upman was a German banker who loved Cuban cigars so much that he moved to Havana in 1844. He set up shop as a banker and a cigar maker, double double money, uh, in the early 1920s. His bank closed, but his cigar making lives on. Uh, rolled in, in a chocolate-hued wrapper with some tiny veins, this Toro has a rich, luxurious draw that presu- produces layers of honey, ginger snap, cookie, and caramel with a hint of black tea, an almond note, and that gradually becomes more pronounced, complex and delicious. So that's the thing. As the smoke goes on, the taste sometimes can also modify, right? It, you know, uh, the way it's packed, you can get to the really good taste in the middle, and then, you know, it gets better and better, better till the end or whatever, right? So uh, H up in the Magnum 50s. So for a single cigar, you're looking at about $16 U.S., uh, the strength on this one, it, it is a lighter cigar. It's a medium, right? Sweeter tones. Usually, if it's a sweeter tone, you're gonna get that. That generally means it's a it's a it's a lighter smoke. Um, and cigar aficionado gave this one a a 93. You know, so it's definitely a high high end uh, one. I personally like the gauges on this. It's a, it's a nice thick ringed cigar, so it's a it's a good smoke. Um, and yeah, a lot of presidents have smoked them. It's also they also have a really nice box as well too. And presented really well. So the H. Upman's, man. Something to consider when thinking about the best. Uh, the next one, simply known as Hoyos. I am talking about this particular one, though, is the Hoyo de Monterey Epicure number, do, number two. Uh, so just a little bit of history. Jose Ginner was a growing... Uh, Tobacco was growing tobacco before creating his brand Hoyo de Monterey in 1865. In 1970, Le Hoyo series was launched in response to demands for a richer tasting line of cigars. Indeed, uh, Le Hoyo is known for its distinctive, rich, complex flavors and taste. This particular one, the Monterey Epicure Number no. Two, uh, has layers of coffee, graham cracker, molasses, 
uh, and peanut blend upon the nutty floor floral core. Oh, and a floral floral core. So it has like a bit of a flowery taste in the middle. Uh, staying in tasty balance the entire time. The Robusto, which is like basically one of their larger gauges. It's a large gauge. Uh, burns slow, cool, and forming a notably firm ash. Uh, for one of these bad boys, you're looking at about $14. US. The strength, like I said, because it's a sweet tasting cigar, you're looking at a, it's going to be about a medium. And uh, Cigar Aficionado gave this baby a 93 out of 100. So yeah, the Hoyos, again, they're, 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 in, they're in my, I personally, they're in my top five of favorites. I like the Hoyos. They're decently priced. You get a really good taste out of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, the Hoyos, you can't go wrong. Uh, a lot of a lot of popular. I believe they're also more accessible. But yeah, the Hoyos are great. You know, uh, the next one also I would say in the legendary category, uh, smoked by one of my favorite uh, Cuban revolutionaries, Che Guevara. Uh, I'm talking about the Monte Cristo numero two, n- numero dos, n- number two. Um, so the Monte Cristo launched in 1935 by the H. Upman factory. So Remember H. Upman? Uh, as a tribute to the Count of Monte Cristo, the cigar smoking hero of the Alexandre Dumas novel. Monte Cristo, uh, you guys remember the Count of Monte Cristo, the movie with Jim Caviezel? Uh, Monte Cristo first just had five sizes in its line, one to five. Others were eventually gradually added from the 1970s. Again, there's when, I, when I'm talking about these brands, there are other lineage and lines and sizes within the brand. So if you want to try them out and you're like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's a little too big for me or that's a little bit too small or whatever, there's many options when it comes to a good company. So that's one to consider. Uh, but yeah, the Monte Cristo is balanced blend and distinguished aroma appeal with all levels of smokers, making it the most popular brand in the world, teaming up with rich but not overwhelming fla- flavors of leather. Uh, this one has such sweet, pice, uh, sweet spices as cinnamon, and nutmeg, and the cigar's trademark of a tangy wood note. I remember when I smoked uh, my first, uh, I believe it was either a four? Could have been a two, but uh, yeah, it's it, it just really reminded me of like a, like a French vanilla coffee. Like a French vanilla coffee. Just, just you know, you're sucking it in blow by blow. And uh, yeah, I mean, the Monte Cristos are really... They're, they're, they're medium. They can be a medium to full. So the Monte Cristos, you're looking at about $19 uh, for a stick. Uh, the strength can be a medium to a full. It's kind of in between there or whatever. And Cigar Aficionado gave this one a 96. I mean, it's one of the most popular ones out there. You know, obviously the name of the Cohiba, but in terms of like re- it, the guys that really do smoke cigars, the Monte Cristo is definitely uh, in God mode too. Um but yeah, the, 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 the taste is, is, uh, I would say, so just to, without spoiling, I would say it's in, in my top three. It's in my top three of, of my favorites. I'm not saying the best. I'm just saying my favorites. Uh, the next one is the Partigas Serie D number four, uh, launched in uh, 1845 by Don Jamie when he uh, opened his, uh, Partigas factory which became the most famous cigar factory of all time uh, i believe i visited it i don't know because i was in havana i dude i when i was in havana i just kept on going to these places and getting myself in trouble but i made it out alive like i always do um but yeah the cigars uh, are made with um, a rich blend of tobaccos contributing to its mark of deep strong earthy flavors primary notes of leather, nuts, and black pepper are uh, bold and assertive, while hints of ginger, spice, and earth also come through intermittently. Made with a three-seam uh, three cap, the Robusto draws a burn evenly. So that's another thing. You want a cigar that's going to like uh, burn nice evenly throughout. Sometimes the way they stack the leaf, it could burn out really fast in the middle and whatever. And if you really want to enjoy it, you want to slow... A slow burning cigar is what you want, right? Um, you know, because that's the thing. Like, like mine was really slow burning. It actually burnt itself out. Not too bad. Well, I mean, the way I was smoking, it was like an idiot. So don't don't go go by that. But yeah, I mean, the Partigas 
Uh, you're looking at about a fourteen dollars for the stick. It is a medium to a full strength, and uh, Cigar Aficionado gave this bad boy a ninety. So, uh, yeah, the Partigas uh, are up there. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I like them. They're not my favorite, um, but they're 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 definitely one of the top tier brands in Cuba. Uh, the next one is Punch Punch. Uh, this is the name of the company. But yeah, Punch the particularly the Punch Double Corona. Right, so this is a big boy. This is a bad boy. This is a big, big boy. Um, Punch was created in 1840 by Don Manuel Lopez of uh, J Valley and Company, predominantly for the British market. Uh, the name came from their humorous magazine, which was portrayed by the comic Mister Punch. Mister Punch cigar in hand, surrounded by 19th century images of cigar crafting, still adorns each box. Its popularity led Winston Churchill. You know, the big smoke and cigar British man, if you remember him, uh, to visit the factory and giving his name to one of its sizes of this brand. Uh, A long cigar that imparts uncannily precise notes of walnut, cedar and crushed coffee beans, all of which build an intensity before the rich chocolatey finish. Balanced, elegant and satisfying. Um, But yeah, man, the you know, this is one of uh, Churchill's favorite, you know, very famously a long burning cigar, a big cigar, you know, uh, punch double. I mean, punch does. Yeah. They're, 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 they're great. They're, they're, they're great. I mean, for a stick, you're looking at about $24 us strength. Again, depending on which one you can get anywhere from, but it's in between a medium and a full, uh, and cigar fishing out. gave this one a, a 94. Um, yeah, I, I, I yeah. Punch. I, I really like them. um, yeah, the, the punches are good. Uh, the next one is uh, the Ramon Alonis Speciali. Oh, special. God damn it. <laughs> Read that like a fucking. Uh, the Ramon Alonis Specially Selected. Um, the brand was founded by Ramon Alonis, a Spanish immigrant in 1837. He was the first to decorate his boxes with labels and his brand logo, henceforth setting the trend as we know today. So if you buy any cigar nowadays, it, because of the price and what you're getting, these cigars are presented in a very luxurious way. It's a very nice box, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of cedar or whatever they do on the top or whatever. But because you're getting the cigars and you're paying a price, they need to present. You can't just give these in a grocery bag, right? So this this is the guy that really set it up. Uh, the taste of the blend is intense and complex. The blend created by its founder remains until today. Uh, each puff, so the, the Roman one is specially selected. Each puff is layered with earthy espresso bean but mo- notes of marzipan and citrus show the cigar's more sophisticated side you know i don't know how you can tell if it's sophisticated or not but well, ramon alonis knows uh yeah for these ones you're looking at about 13 dollars for one of these sticks uh medium to full is again the, the flavoring and these ones are about a 96 so really a really really high now the thing is the ramon alonis uh are are, are i would say if you're not, if you're new to smoking, you've never really heard this brand. But in Cuba, they're almost like the, I don't know how to explain it. Um, they're just really fucking good, man. They're really fucking good. It's all, uh, yeah. They're 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 like the go-to down in Cuba, you know. And uh, yeah, the definitely got a high score on them. Uh, I smoked one of these bad boys on the beach. It's very hard to find them out here in Canada. Um, again, I think because they're not because that's another thing with Cuba. There's usually they have these international brands, and then they have like the the brands that are just predominantly that you could only get in Cuba. This one, I think it's in certain markets, but yeah, it's a little bit hard to get out here. So if you can get in it, try it, and who knows, might be your favorite. Uh, speaking about favorites, the next one is without a doubt my favorite it's my go-to brand it's my uh i just it's a i, I want to say it's the first cigar i ever smoked uh not uh no no in canada i sm- well i smoked a couple of fucking captain blacks maybe but this is the first cuban that i i, I had ever back in the day. i think i was like just out of high school may might have been just started college but i'm talking about the romeo e julieta churchills uh, as we as we know before, Churchill kind of created his own gauge, a nice thick, 
Gage, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, but yeah, the Romeo Julieta, founded by Alvarez and Garcia in uh, 1875 and named after Shakespeare's tragic lovers, Romeo and Julieta. Uh, the brand rose to fame in 1903 under the direction of the talented promoter Don Pepin. In 1946, when Winston Churchill, a lover of the brand, visited Havana, his name was not only commemorated on the brand, but was also served to describe the most famous size, the Churchill. So the Churchill uh, size and gauge, it's particular to his favorite, and it eventually became the, one of the most popular sizes of cigar. You know, it's, uh, I believe I believe the one that I smoked was a Churchill gauge. But anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the Churchill, it's a classic medium-bodied cigar composed of well-balanced aromatic blends and fine celest- selected tobaccos. Uh, topped with a triple seam cap, this Churchill burns slow and draws quite evenly, delivering a tasty, nutty core of almond and hazelnut, framed with uh, by notes of cappuccino, orange peel, and a bit of peppery spice, and clearly defined chocolate note. So I've always liked the Romeo Jolly because they are a sweeter tasting uh, cigar. I li- I don't like bold, kick your mouth open, ah, ooh, that's a harsh cigar. I like something that, you know, you can go on a fucking beach, chill out, get in the fresh air while some sucking down one of these and uh it's very smooth to me so it's my favorite of, of, of all i'm not gonna say it's the best right now but i'm saying it's my favorite so um the romeo and julietta uh you're looking at about 16 dollars a stick for these babies it is a medium strength one light easy go to some people say it's for the ladies but i fucking love these babies uh, Cigar Aficionado score gave this one a 93. So yeah, the Romeo and Juliet is my personal favorite. Very easy going. I would I would suggest if if you're new to smoking, grab you like a short Churchill. Grab yourself a nice short Churchill. It's very short, very light, and uh, you won't regret it. And uh, you know what? If you do smoke because of me, uh, drop in my DMs and uh, I want I want to be there for your first smoke. Maybe we'll do a whatever those live shit. TikTok. Or, I'm on everything. Instagram, TikTok. I'm not a Facebook guy. I can't do Facebook. All the old people have taken over it, and it's way too political. I'm now either on Instagram, Twitter, uh, uh, TikTok, because it's fucking dumb. A lot of hot girls on there, too. So wherever the hot girls go, I'm, I'm going to be there. So TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter, just because I like to... For me, I use Twitter as a... I like to drop grenades, and by grenades is I say horrible shit. And I drop it in these deep whatever tweets or whatever and just see people go lose their minds because they go crazy. If you get affected by Twitter, you need to fucking chill out and smoke a cigar. Anyways, uh, the last one is uh, what a lot of people consider to be the baby brother to the Cohiba, uh, a top premium brand, not as well publicized as the Cohiba. Recent years, they've become uh, the more uh, diplomatic brand, but I'm talking about the Trinidad Esmeralda. Uh, once Havana's mystery brand, the Trinidad was used for gift purposes by the Cuban government for many years. In 1998, the Trinidad was launched to the public in just one size, the Fanadores, made at Cohiba's exclusive El Lugato f- uh, factory. This unusual cigar offers nutty, rich, medium-flavored smoke, a thick cigar rolled with a golden-hued wrapper and pigtail cap. Its open draw shows a savory palate of wood and leather and with hints of almond uh, and a brown sugar sweetness. So it I'll be completely honest. The last time I wasn't actually able to grab a Trinidad, I don't know. Cause I went back in 2014. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why I missed this one. I'm I still have yet to taste it. I've been told this one is uh, basically the Cohiba. If you, if you want to smoke a Cohiba, but not pay Cohiba prices, this is the baby you're going to want to smoke. And uh, yeah, I've yet to smoke it. But uh, I mean, you're looking at about $25 a stick. Um, strength is a medium. So it's not as robust and as strong as a Cohiba. But if you want a good tasting cigar with not as much kick as a Cohiba, this is the one to get. Uh, the Cigar Aficionado gave these babies a 91. Um, yeah, this is like one of, I believe. Yeah, this is one of the ones I'm yet to try. But I've been told really good. So. With that being said, of all the Cuban cigars today, uh, in terms of cost, taste, 
overall appeal and what I think again when it comes to cigars and like like most things and like how this podcast works I challenge you to go and find out your best go out there taste them all determine what is the best for you but if I had to take a general what I think is going to introduce you and be like you know what a solid smoke uh for, for everyone um so here's my thing okay so i'm just gonna give you my top three i think if you're just getting into smoking and you're just figuring out i would say go with the romeo julietas the churchills short whatever very light tasting very easy to smoke i can get them anywhere they're decently priced uh and then the next one i would say is uh the monte cristos they're 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 just a fucking out of this park cigar, decently priced, you know, and all that stuff, and a little bit stronger. Yeah, they're they're great as well. And then listen, I think if you're gonna get into smoking, you know, you, you I don't think you're a real smoker until you've smoked a Cohiba. You don't necessarily have to go with the Bohiba, the 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 Bihikis, whatever. I can't even say them right. You get like their general robustos, what are a little bit cheaper, but any any Cohiba is going to be, you have to have one just in your life just to get a taste for them. So then you know you can have a gauge of a full tasting uh, top tier Cubano. That being said, I believe the best Cuban cigar, I would have to go with the Monte Cristo number twos. Monte Cristo number twos. Now, again, like I said, they're not my favorite. But I've smoked them, never been disappointed. Uh, they're a great length, great gauge. Uh, it's it's just it's just an just a it's just a great smoke, you know. And not too overly powerful, not very light. They're in between. They're just you know they're there. So uh, and you know the, te- the 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 flavor of it is great. So I would say yeah, I I would say the the the, the Monte Cristo number two is kind of the archetype for you can go lighter, you can go heavier, but if you want an in between overall great smoke the monte cristo number twos are the ones you're going to want to go so that being said uh there's a couple of birds right now if you can hear that um that being said that is how it pretty much works i smoke them i test them i read about them i live them uh viva la cuba and uh yeah that's the best things in life podcast with me uh kevin amoki thank you for stopping by now go out there enjoy your day have a nice smoke Uh, Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite, or let me know, you know, give me some info on some of the other cigars that maybe I didn't have on this list. I was, I was again, the Trinidad's. I want to smoke, and maybe I'll do another pod updated where, oh fuck yeah, the Trinidad actually takes it out of the park. But um, as as it stands right now, of the ones I've smoked, of the one that people and ones that you know, cigar aficionado recommends, uh, the Monte Cristo number twos are are the best of the best as it stands right now. Things can change just like the weather. So yeah, go get out there, enjoy life and uh, trying to learn Spanish. I'm trying to end this on a Spanish note. Um, uh, yo, yo quiero tu <laughs> hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, babies.